And in sports, the latest woes for the NHL continue on. According to NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman, talks have resumed between the NHL and the Players Association. But with games continuing to be canceled, only a shortened season may be possible. But at least for Peninsula Kings fans, their spirits were lifted when they got a chance to lift the cup. That's right, Lord Stanley himself came to the promenade on the peninsula for a visit. I had a chance to sit down with some local fans and the man who is the keeper of the cup. On my ninth season now, uh, I started off as a volunteer. Uh, worked a couple of events and then uh, started putting some part-time hours in the museum. and. Then I guess I was in the right place at the right time, and uh, this is my third summer now traveling with the, the winning team, and I do other things too, uh, traveling with the Hall of Fame with our outreach program, and we travel with different trophies and other uh, display systems and stuff throughout uh, North America and, and anywhere the Cup wants to go or other trophies go. What's it been like here being in Los Angeles? Of course, we're very excited to be Stanley Cup champions here, as you, I'm sure you, you know. What's it been like here taking it around? Uh, it's been great. Great response by all the fans. Uh, you know, it's been a long time coming. Uh, the fans have uh, been very supportive of the team and uh, everywhere you go with the Stanley Cup, it's just it draws in the crowds and people just want to see it, take their picture with it, uh, touch it. You know, it, it's a pretty cool thing to do and see everybody's happy faces. Oh, it's history in the making and we're just so thrilled that the Cup has come to promenade on the peninsula and that we could be here to share in the joy and the excitement of this. I have, I have to ask you, have you ever seen the Stanley Cup in person? Not yet. Not I'm yet. really excited. I know. Is this your first time you've seen the Stanley Cup? No, actually, I uh, saw it in Hermosa Beach when Jarrett Stoll paraded down the street with uh, with it on the back of the fire truck. Okay, and for people that have never seen it before, what was that experience like for you seeing it for the first time? Oh, it was wonderful. It glistens so beautifully in the Southern California light. Okay, now on another note, we don't have hockey right now, and there may be a lockout for an extended period. Talk about that. Well, it's heartbreaking, particularly coming off the Stanley Cup victory. Uh, this is an extremely exciting time to be a Kings fan. And uh, after so many years of waiting and hoping to, to not get to continue on that, that high is, is extremely disappointing. Okay, I know you're the king of the hill, but you've got the appropriate crown on today and the appropriate shirt for the Stanley Cup to the visit the peninsula here. Yeah, we're having the Stanley Cup at the promenade on the peninsula, uh, celebrating the uh, Ice Chalet's connection with the Kings and uh, our Ice Arena, which we're expected to reopen on the 22nd of this month. Very nice. Now, you have to be a big Kings fan, of course. Uh, well, I live in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I started watching the Kings back when Gretzky played uh, with the Kings. It's the first Kings game I saw. But I grew up in upstate New York, so I'm a huge hockey fan. Always have been. I know it's, you, you travel with this in a very special way. Uh, yes, we do have a, a case that's form-fitted uh, when we travel with the airlines and everything. It's uh, put in the case, it's locked up, and uh, so it doesn't bounce around. Uh, so it's very protective, protected, and uh, the airlines will treat it like any other baggage. Uh, you know, they'll scan it and screen it, x-ray it, do whatever they can, but uh, they're still happy to see it too, and we have to open it up because they want their photos with it too. So we, we try to help out where we can, and, and in return, they help us out, treat us very well. Well, it's very exciting. I actually got to be on the ice with the Kings when they got the cup, and I got to tell you, it was just a moment you'll never forget. And finally, with Halloween coming up, everyone is looking for the perfect costume. So we turn to our Green Beat reporter, Mark J. Dottie, who makes Halloween a little green. Is that Halloween costume in your closet that you're never going to use again, making you feel crabby? Well, I've got the solution for you. Vintage clothing is huge here. Um, people come from all over Southern California to rent for stage plays and television and then their personal church plays or theme parties. So we do use vintage clothing a lot, but we also like used costumes. We prefer the higher quality ones, but we'll take just about anything and try to make use of it. We'll recycle by way of our rack that's outside when we can't make use of something and hope for a donation. So if uh, we're after Halloween, we've mm -hmm. had a lot of fun, we bought this uh, expensive costume, mm -hmm. but we're not going to mm -hmm. use it again. We take it to the costume closet? We'd love to have it. We'd like to, to have other people have the opportunity of using things that otherwise would probably just sit in somebody's closet. Yeah. The money that's raised here at the costume closet, where does it go? The money goes back directly to our PTAs within the Palos Verdes Peninsula Unified School District. And how do you decide how much money goes to what 
PTA? What school? Uh, the funds are divided amongst the schools based um, it's basically allocated back to the schools based on the number of hours they have volunteers here. We're completely a volunteer organization. Um, so the number of hours that each person comes down here and works, they designate which school um, they are going to donate their hours towards and that money goes to them. Um, so are you always looking for volunteers? How we you are volunteers? always looking for volunteers and not only do we have volunteers from the schools, we have a lot of teen organizations. So we have quite a few teenagers that come down here. In fact this summer um, we had about 45 teenagers donate over 600 hours of service to completely go through our inventory and make sure it was all clean, that we had everything that we needed, and that it was in the right place. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. It's before Halloween, mm -hmm. and I'm looking for a good costume. Is this mm -hmm. the place to go? Absolutely. We have a costume selection of over 7,000 costumes already put together. We have thousands of pieces of wigs, hats, shoes, purses, jewelry. You name it, we have it here. If I want it for Halloween, mm -hmm. I should be here a week before, or can I come make arrangements a month or a month and a half before? We have a month prior for Halloween, and then during the year, it's a week prior for other things. What about like cleaning, you know, so how does that work? Cleaning is a long process for some of our costumes. Some of our costumes we have to send out to dry cleaners, and um, then we have a group of women that clean all of our items, iron them, and get them ready and put back out on the hangers. What are the hours for the costume closet? Regular hours are Tuesdays from 1 to 5, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11 to 5, and then Saturday from 11 to 3. Great, and uh, is there a phone number or a website they can go to? Um, 310-378-5005 would be our phone number, and then costume closet pops up right when you look it up on the web. So if you want to save a little green on this Halloween and find yourself a cool looking costume, come on down to the costume closet. Great job, Mark, and happy Halloween to all of our residents. And that will do it for this episode of Peninsula Beat. From everyone here at RPV-TV, make it a great day.